Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. So I hear a lot of stories of people basically coming in and stories of their tennis. They described to me that, you know, I keep hitting it in the net or I keep hitting it out. But what's the one thing that us as stringers that we can't see or know that would actually help us a lot? Stay tuned. Oh, hey guys. Direct Tennis 2.0 mobile app is out now. Download it today. As you know, Direct Tennis is the first place to connect stringers with tennis players in your neighborhood. With the 2.0 mobile app, they now have a tennis shop. You can buy tennis gear on the app now. And through the app only, get 10% off with discount code TENNISSPIN. And you will get 10% off your entire order. Download the Direct Tennis 2.0 mobile app today. All right, so I got a fellow stringer over here, Coach Rob. Um, Coach Rob actually has the benefit most of the time of seeing the people that he strings for. And when they describe what he needs, he can actually interpret exactly what they need and maybe correct it or fix it somehow with the string. So do you think that seeing the person with the racket and the string helps a lot? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Especially because you can see where they've come from. So you mm -hmm. can see how they have developed and you can see hopefully where they're going and how much they're putting into it. Like, hey, this is a, you know, a beginning high school player who's playing once a week. They don't need poly. Right. Right? Like, they're not breaking strings. Give them something that feels good. String at mid-tension. Right. And, and then let them advance. And tell them, hey, this is a, you know, two-buck chuck or whatever. And that you're going to, if you start breaking this, there are more choices out there. There's more options for you mm -hmm. um, that we can explore. But let's start with this and work your way towards that. Now, I don't have the benefit of Coach Rob most of the time. Um, I just hear from a lot of people, they're like, I need more spin. I mean, that's the number one request is I need more spin. Um, is it the string or the swing? <laughs> good question. That's why if I can see it, I could tell a little bit more. I mean, if you have a continental grip and you're swinging through, I don't know what I can do except put you into an S pattern and a 17 or 18 gauge you know, strings that'll produce a little bit more spin for you. But I, I don't have the benefit of seeing that though. I mean, it's either I need more spin. Um, what exactly is pop in your mind? Because a lot of people, a lot of younger people say I need more pop. Right. So pop to me, there again, I have the benefit of seeing the players and I usually go back with, do you need more pop or do you need to hit the ball in the, in the space, in the right space? In the sweet spot? In the court. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like more pop and hitting the back fence not helping us. Right. right. How about we need a little more control, keep the ball in the court, and then once we can control that, we can get more pop. So, so a lot of times I, I'm like talking more about, hey, yes, you want to hit it harder, but you're, you really don't want to hit it harder. You need to hit it in more before you start hitting it hard. So you're telling me that, I mean, I thought that me not being able to see them and trying to kind of read between the lines uh, it, it is difficult. So you're yes. actually seeing them. Right. And they're telling you what they want. What they think they want. Exactly. And then I try to come back to, <laughs> yes, you may want to hit it harder like you see on TV, but you're hitting one out of 10 balls in, not cutting it. 
All right, so not, you're not only reading between the lines, you're correcting their grammar when it comes right. to what they want. <laughs> right, trying to explain. Okay. Like, so, like I had one uh, uh, boy, junior, and uh, he was playing a practice set and he lost and his style of play is crush it and rush it and he loves to bang it. He looks and he kind of plays like center in sort of his mannerisms and he played a guy who not real tall, doesn't miss a shot, keeps a ball in play and he says, oh, he beat me. And I'm like, did he beat you or did you beat yourself? He goes, well, I kind of beat myself. And I said, right. And he goes, I didn't make enough first serves. And I go, you're only as good as your backhand and your second serve. So why don't you work more on hitting good second serves? He goes, I just need to hit all first serves and make them all. And I'm like, that's not reality. That's not realistic. <laughs> like, okay, we have a <laughs> we have a philosophical difference going on here. But we we kind of come to an understanding of like even when he's practicing, let's hit four in a row in off the ball machine before we hit the fifth one really hard. So he's a candidate for pro blend at 65 then. He he could be. <laughs> he did break Hyper G16. Oh, wow. So in he his so he needs control. So would he come to you and say, "Rob, I need control. I need to keep the ball in play." No, he should be, but he he wants to hit it hard. Okay. He's a teenager with one mindset of I want to hit it hard. So what's his string intention then? He had it at Hyper G 16, 16 at 54. Okay. That's, in, in a blade, 16, 19. That's not horrible. That's not horrible, especially in fresh. Uh, if it lasts him maybe four to six hours, keep going at that. Maybe jack it up a pound or two. a while. Okay. Uh, he likes to hit it hard, which doesn't always include spin. He just okay. likes to hit it hard. Okay. Okay. Uh, we got to save his arm. Is he a big dude? He is big. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he's a junior, so he's oh okay. So I mean, it's, it's kind of like things like that. What you want versus what you should do are two separate things. Uh, it's like what Coach Rob said. His player wants power. He wants to hit it past people, but but he just lost to somebody who can <laughs> keep the ball over the net in the lines one more time than he could, and he let his opponent beat him self. Now, let me ask you this question. Can he hit it past people? Does he have the ability to? Sure. Okay. It goes past him and it goes right off the back fence. <laughs> in or out? <laughs> Not often in enough. Okay. Okay. Well, obviously, a little more control for that guy. Yes. You know they make a tour bite 15 light, right? I think he did tell me that. Yeah. So they can do 15 light. He didn't break strings that often. He is now starting to play more where he may go through strings more often, but. But if you go 15 line, they'll give him a little more control too. Okay. Yeah. It'll be a little deader. So he does, can't launch it as, as far. Just a little. Just a little. Okay. So that's what I'm trying to say is your stringer, I mean, like, like I said, Coach Rob has the benefit of seeing these players a little bit more. But most of the time when you bring it into a store or have your stringer do it, I mean, the best thing you can do for yourself is maybe have your stringer see what you're doing because a lot of the stuff kind of gets lost in translation when it comes to what you want versus what you should get um, and most of the time what you really need. Um, but I think a lot of also is, is, at least from where I am, is educating them. Mm -hmm. Like this is what tighter string tension does for you. This mm -hmm. is what a lower string tension does for you. and taking having the access to them where I'm not in a rush, I'm not in a store, I don't have people in a line, I can talk them through it. Right. Because I want them to be educated so when they go off to college, they know this is what string I use, this is what I like, this is my tension, right. and be educated so that they can represent themselves and, and go and, and, and talk confidently about what it is they want. Right, exactly. So, I mean, we can only do so much, we listen, and then we can only imagine what we think you need and just follow what you tell us. Watching is something very different, and in understanding how you play, what your swing style is, 
how aggressive you are. I mean, those are a lot of the things we don't know. We're just listening to, I need power. I need spin. So if it were power, would you string it tighter or looser? Right. So if they need more power, I go, I'd ask also if, or if you're a string breaker, if you're not, I go thinner. If, if you are, I go thicker. And then I would drop the tension, possibly find a more power oriented string. So I'm just going to listen and give you kind of what you want, not knowing how you play or who you really are. So, right. yeah, because right. it's hard for sure trying to because uh, there's so many options of string out there. Right. And they all are telling you it's this or that or power the, control spin. Right. Power this, control this spin. This one's got more shape. This power control spin. Yeah. Feel. <laughs> That's all it says. Every string says that. But there's just different levels of all of that. Uh, that's why there's bars, but every bar is kind of all the way to the right at nine out of 10, eight out of 10, 10 out of 10. It's like, is there anything that's one out of 10? Pro blend, right. <laughs> no power. But I think if the, <laughs> if the customer is educated, then they can go in and say, yeah, I break strings. I need a 16 or 15 and I know my tension range and I know stringing it tighter is going to give me more control and hit the ball shorter in the court. And if I string it looser, the ball is going to land deeper in the court and mm -hmm. give me a little more power. So it's, you know, it's hard. Right. It's hard for sure if you don't know actually how they play. Right. And you're just having to go off of them. Exactly. So guys, do yourself a favor. Get to know your stringer. Maybe have them, you know come out and watch you play or take a video yes, of take yourself. take a video and go, hey, here's how I kind of play. Yeah. Here, watch the video for a minute. Here's what I have. Here's what I've been using. Yeah. What, what else out there do you see that could match up with what I'm doing? Yeah, show them a couple of rally balls, forehand, backhand, serve, um, and then see you know, what your swing path is, uh, what your grip is, how you play, how you swing, how aggressive you are. All that helps us in determining what's best for you. So just throwing it out there, guys, because we can only listen and give you kind of what you want. Um, we don't know what should be the best for you. Uh, and we're trying to decipher what you're trying to tell us because sometimes, like I said, the wording can be a little different between what you're saying and what we're trying to understand. Okay. Coach Rob, any final words for the peeps? Um, and if you break a string, please don't cut it out. Please get it to the uh, to your stringer so they can see, oh, wait, you shanked it. This grommet needs to be cleaned out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, you broke it dead center. Great. We'll cut it out, redo it. But if you're, you know, if it's in a weird break, we can ask, hey, did you break this? Up? Did you shank this? Did you hit a rock? Did you? Right. You know, what happened? Like, oh wait, your grommets are wearing out. Your bumper guard shot. Hey, we have to change this. If we restring it the same way it is, it's just going to do the same thing. So. Right. No, thank you. That's a great point. Some people use it as a cane and it breaks because you're using it as a cane. Don't do that. <laughs> Coach Rob, thank you so much. Sure. Uh, guys, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.